everybody out there. Today for you guys, we're profiling my friend's Lunar Light deck. Now, is this kind of based off what happened in Ohio at the YCS, or is this your own take on the deck? This is my own take on the deck that I've been kind of editing since the deck's release. Since the deck's release, yeah. uh, I've always loved this deck, and um, I wanted to play it as kind of my first deck, um, my first real deck, and um, I'm just doing my own spin on it. Gotcha. So, um, I do apologize also that we're at Locals and it's loud, so my apologies, we can't help that. But I hope you guys all enjoy the deck profile. So without further ado, I'll let my friend take over. Okay, so let's get started with uh, this Lunar Light deck profile. First off, I'm going to start off with the most important Lunar Light monsters. Uh, first off, three Collider Chick, three Yellow Martin, and three Black Sheep. So Kaleido Chick allows you to send to send a Lunalite monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard and then copy its name. Um, the sending the graveyard part is caught, so it's unashable, which is bonkers actually, when you really think about it. And she just does so much for this deck, along with her sister here. Uh, Luna Light Yellow Martin. Um, Yellow Martin, whenever she's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, she can search out a Luna Light Spell or Trap card, which I, we will get into later. Um, and also, she has a Zephyros, Zephyros like effect where you can bounce a Luna Light monster or spell or trap that's face up on the field. At, bounce it back to your hand and then special summon her, but banish her when you leave the field. Which, you're not going to be banishing her too often, other than off of another card that we're going to talk about later. And then, Luna Light Black Sheep, um, when you fuse with her, uh, you can recur back a Luna Light. She can, she, you can discard her and either add back Polymerization, or you can add back a Luna Light monster from the graveyard. So she is one of your searching tools, and she is just really good to getting into combos. This deck is very combo heavy, which you will see in a bit. So next up, your next most important monsters, your six most important monsters, are Luna Light Wolf and Luna Light Tiger. So, Luna Light Tiger is Scale 5, level 3, and her pendulum effect says you can target a Luna Light monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but its effects are negated. And this really plays well with Chick because, yes, her effect may be negated, but you must keep in mind that the sending part of the effect is cost, so you can use it under negation, which is bonkers. And also, she can be a target for Yellow Martin over here to bounce it back, and then you can actually use her again because she's a soft once per turn, but you do need to activate her again in the Pendulum Zone to get that effect. And then her monster effect, uh, when she's destroyed by Battle Archard effect, you can target one Moonlight monster in the graveyard, special summon it. It has all of its effects, uh, which is really good if you're trying to defend yourself, which, is, which we will get into later with the next card. And then Moonlight Wolf is basically your Mirror Confusion Court deck. Her pendulum effect says you can banish cards in your, on your field or in your graveyard to fusion summon on the extra deck. This gets out your bigger monsters, your boss monsters. Uh, she's extremely good. And she can also be bounced back off of Martin, which makes her even better. She's just great. Next, um, I play three blue cat because if I do brick and I do at least open this, I do have ways to get more to get other monsters like Kaleido Chick if they just keep attacking and attacking it. So uh, she's really good. Her effect says that. Um, when she's special summoned, she can double Luna Light Monster's attack, and when she's destroyed by battle or card effect, you can you can special summon another one from your deck, any Luna Light Monster. This includes herself, this includes Tiger, this includes Chick. So she's a really good uh, battle recruiter, and yeah, I play three of her, you can play less if you play.
like, next up are the less important monsters, but you still want to play them. Um, two Emerald Bird. Uh, honestly, one of these can be replaced with Foolish Burial, and it really wouldn't make a difference. But I, I'm playing two because, unfortunately, I don't have Foolish Burial right now. But uh, her effect is when you normal summon her or special summon her, you can discard one card and then draw one card. So she's a looter. And also, when she's sent to the graveyard by card effect, this includes fusing or discarding off of her effect, ironically enough, um, you can you can target one monster in your graveyard and then special summon it, but its effects are negated. Similar to Tiger, but it's less good because she's it's less good because she is she has to get discarded for the effect when Tiger can just bring one back whenever. So two to one of her. Then finally for my one ofs, I play one butterfly and one crimson fox. So butterfly is it's a card. It's a really good card. It you can discard it and it gives a thousand attack. Or you can banish it, or not or, but you can also banish it from your graveyard to special summon a lunar monster from your hand. This helps with stuff like Kaleido Chick, because you can send off Kaleido Chick, banish it if you have two Kaleido Chicks in hand. And Crimson Fox, uh, whenever she's sent to the graveyard via card effect, you can target a monster and make it zero. This card also can be banished to protect a Lunar Light monster that's being targeted, and then both players gain a thousand life points. I mainly play her just to make sure that like anything like Unicorn or Cerberus doesn't really get at my Lunar Light monsters. If I don't open so well, but you can cut her if you want. I just enjoy playing her. And that's it for the monsters. I don't play any hand traps in the main deck, I relegate them to the side deck. This is a budget variant, so stuff like Ash and Impermanence are unfortunately off the list. Well, Ash actually can be on the list now because she just got a reprint. But next we're playing our the most important spells in the deck. Free Lunar Light Perfume. This card is bonkers. So it's a one, it's a Rota, and two, it's a Monster Reborn. So the first effect of Perfume is you just target one Lunar Light Monster in your graveyard, so just summon it, which is really which is just really good for recurring stuff like Martin or Chick to extend your plays. And also you can banish this card, discard one card and then add a Lunar Light Monster from deck to hand. This can pop off stuff like Chick, well not, yeah, Chick, Martin, Emerald Bird, Crimson Fox, and a whole, whatever you need, and add you stuff like Tiger if you need it, or Wolf if you need it. So this card is just insanely good. Play three of it. Next, three, Tenki, Fire Formation Tenki. Uh, this searches your whole deck. This is pretty much self-explanatory in any Beast Warrior deck. So, uh, the only thing it cannot search is Wolf in this deck, but you have Perfume anyway to search Wolf, so it's not that big of a deal. Next, I play two Fusion. Um, I like playing two Fusion and one Polymerization, because then that would equal three fusion targets. I play the one polymerization so I can search it off of cheap, and then basically I can use it as discard fodder. But this is mainly what you're gonna fuse with if you don't have wolf. Uh, basically, it's a Shadal fusion for the archetype. If your if your opponent controls a special summon monster, uh, you can use one card in your hand. You can use one card in your deck and cards in your hand as fusion material, which is really, really good. So I just play two fusion. I play two fusion though, because it is a hard once per turn, and one polymerization, so it can be switched by sheep. Next, two Foolish Burial Goods. Foolish Burial Goods um, can send another Lunar Light card that we are going to get into later. Or it can send Perfume, and you still get all its effects, so Foolish Burial Goods is just a good card in this deck. 
<laughs> Next up, um, just the generic stuff, Recall by the Grave, two Cosmo Cyclone, and one Monster Reborn. Uh, Called by the Grave to get rid of hand traps or any problematic cards. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone to get rid of any problematic spell or trap cards. And then Monster Reborn because it's Monster Reborn and why aren't you playing at least one Monster Reborn. And then my final card in the deck is Lunar Light Serenade Dance. Uh, sorry? Lunar Light Serenade Dance. So Lunar Light Serenade Dance, um, you can send it off of Foolish Burial Goods because it does have a graveyard effect. Its graveyard effect is you can discard one card and banish this card, especially on the Lunar Light Monster from deck, which is Amazing, but it also has an on-field effect, which is used way less often, but it can still get you out of some sticky situations. Um, when a fusion monster is fusion summoned, uh, you can target the fusion monster, then special summon a Lunalite -like token to your opponent's side of the field, and then uh, that monster gains, I think, double the attack? I, I don't use this very much. It gains 500 attack for each card in the graveyard. So, the on-field effect isn't as great as the graveyard effect, but uh, we were never using the on-field effect, were we? So, that's it for the main deck. Now for the extra deck. So, my future packet is two Cat Dancer, two Panther Dancer, one Saber Dancer, and two Leo Dancer. So, Cat Dancer is basically your plan C. You don't, you really don't want to summon this, but there's going to be some situations where, unfortunately, you have to. Um, Panther Dancer, two Panther Dancer. Uh, uh, this is what you want to send off of Chick to summon this lady right here, but we'll get into her later. Um, Panther Dancer can be your plan B option if plan A over here isn't available. And uh, she can be good in some situations. I don't use Saber very much, but I like to have her in my extra deck just in case the opportunity presents itself because this deck can, in fact, make Leo Dancer Saber Dancer. Um, and she's a really cool card. She just came out in Sister of the Roses, and basically she gains 300 for each Banished Beast Warrior in your graveyard. And if she, if she's sent to the graveyard, if she's in your graveyard except the turn she was sent there, you can target a Lunar Light monster and give it three plus 3k attack, which can make your Lunar Light monster go to crazy numbers. And then we have the, the main star of the show, really, Leo Dancer. Leo Dancer um, is just an amazing card. She can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects, which is bonkers. Uh, she can swing twice, which is bonkers. And she's 3,500 attack, which is just nuts. Honestly, this is what you want to go into most of the time when you're going into your fusion plays. So, that's my fusion package. Next, Xyz. Next, Xyz. Um, so, we play one Brother of the Fire Fist, one Tornado Dragon, one Abyss Dweller, and one Bagusca. So, Bagusca and Abyss Dweller are for when you go first. This is for. Tornado Dragon is for getting rid of back row that is troublesome. And then this gets you tanky and also can negate effects. So it can negate stuff like Titan, um, it can negate stuff like Colossus, really problematic stuff. It can just negate entirely. So this is really the start of the show. Next up for my link points. Yep. Okay. So next up for my link monsters. One Wee Witch, one Underclock, and one Firefighting Room at all. So Wee Witch Magician just boosts your Dark Monsters by five, by 500. 
which is which on top of the already insane attack that you're probably going to be getting gets a little bit crazy um underclock taker is just sort of pushed for that otk if it wasn't there already and drumadal is for popping back row and possibly even popping bricks in your hand like if serenade dance decides to show itself in the hand and you don't have any way to get it out of your hand other than drumadal it can get it out of your hand just fine so yeah, those are my link monsters, and I actually forgot a fusion monster. Um, I play this because there are situations where it does come up, starving venom, and it can actually assist you in getting that final kill. So that's good. Next, side deck. Uh, this is a token that my friend made me. Shout out to Light Shaver Constellation. Uh, he made me this very glamorous token. Next, two Lancia for the ABC and Thunder Dragon matchup. A Vic failure because she's good. One Cranker Tops, one Mind Control because I couldn't get a second Cranker Tops in time. Uh, so this should be two Cranker Tops and you can just get rid of Mind Control. Next, three Shared Ride. Uh, shared Ride pretty much stopped your opponent's turn. It's basically just like Maxi, but for adding cards to deck to hand, it destroys Shirt Sharks, destroys Sky Striker. Because you don't, because they don't want you drawing so many cards. Then next up for the traps, 3D Barrier for again, Loom Dragon matchup. And Burning Abyss when Chair Beating comes out. Our card's gonna be nuts. And then finally, 3 Red Reaper for the Altergeist matchup and for any other matchup that may be problematic. Um, the ability to just OTK through stuff is just immense, and it's amazing. So, that's my Little Light deck. Thank you for watching. Okay.